Hi there guys, this is Harry and welcome back to my English lessons where I'm helping you to improve your English so you can get better spoken English. So what are we going to talk about this week? Well, we're going to talk about idioms and idioms connected with time. So as always, I'm going to go through the idioms I've picked out and selected. I'll go through them and then I'll give you an example. And please remember to subscribe to the channel and you can also listen to my podcasts in whichever format you wish to listen to them. And at the end, I'm going to give you my contact details. So if you want to contact me, well, of course you can do so. So let's get cracking. And as we're talking about idioms with time, let's not waste any time and let's move on. So here are the idioms. A stitch in time, and it's usually followed by a stitch in time saves nine. All in good time. All in good time. At the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat. Before your time. Before your time. For good. For the time being. B-E-I-N-G. For the time being. From time to time. In donkey's years or for donkey's years. So you can use either preposition. So in donkey's years or for donkey's years. In the nick of time, nick. Yeah, get that. In the nick of time, once in a blue moon, on the spur of, of the moment, on the spur of the moment, and finally the other day. Okay, so they're the individual idioms. So let me take them one at a time and let's go through them. So guys, I should have mentioned as well, I'm just sitting here with my little badge, if you can see it here. And the badge says, I got my COVID-19 vaccine for us all. Okay, so I got it in the nick of time. Okay, so a stitch in time saves nine. What does that mean? Well, a stitch in time saves nine is a old fashioned expression still used today in, in British English. And when we talk about a stitch, a stitch is something you, when you're sewing the clothes, a stitch, okay, so all of this seam on your, on my jumper or on your shirt or dress, these are all either individual stitches done by hand or they are machine sewn by a, a sewing machine, okay? And when we use the expression, a stitch in time saves nine, it means if we repair something very quickly, as soon as we notice it, then it will save us having to make a bigger repair later on. So literally, if I ripped or tore my jumper climbing over a fence, which I did often when I was a little boy, um, and if I left it for a long time, the hole would get a little bigger and a little bigger, and then until such time it was so big, it would be impossible to repair. So when we said a stitch in time saves nine, if I'd stitched or asked my mum to stitch it when it happened, then it would have uh, saved having to throw the jumper out or the jeans out and having to buy a new pair. So in the modern world, when we say a stitch in time saves nine, it really means we shouldn't delay something until it's too late to repair it. We should do it when we see it happening or when we notice it. And then if we do it immediately or very quickly, then it'll save us a lot more work later on. So let's think of an example where you could say a stitch in time saves nine. So if you notice some problem with your laptop, for example, and there's a little bit of fall in the power or you feel there's some problem with your processor, or you just notice something, you say, ah, it's okay, I'll leave it. I'll, if it gets worse, I'll think about it then. But the next week, it's a little bit slower. The following week, it's a little bit slower. You really know you need to get something done. And then someday, bang, you get the blue screen or black screen and your laptop computer will not work at all. Then it's too late. The stitch in time saves nine was three or four weeks ago. When you first noticed the problem, you should have fixed it then. Okay, stitch in time saves nine. Okay, the next expression is all in good time all in good time. Usually we use the expression when somebody is trying to push us or trying to hurry us to do something. Come on, come on. I need to this done. I have to get it ready. I have to go. Blah, blah. Yeah. So that I keep pushing you and trying to get you to hurry up. All in good time. All in good time. Everything will be done. Just wait, be patient. Yeah. So if somebody's trying to hurry you, trying to push you to get something done, then the best expression for you to use is all in good time, meaning 
I'll do it. And when I do it, it will be done properly. If you rush me and push me, guess what? I'm probably going to make a few mistakes. So it would be much better if you just sit down, relax, and I'll let you know when I'm finished. Yeah. So all in good time. So whatever you're going to do, you've got work to do on a presentation. You've got to arrange the meeting. You've got to invite the people. You say, okay, look, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send out the invitations because that's the most important. And then when I've done that, I'll arrange the venue. Okay, and then when that's done, we can start working on the presentation. So all in good time. We'll get it done one at a time, step by step, all in good time. Okay, and our next idiom is at the drop of a hat. So take off your hat, you drop it on the floor. Boom, boom, very quickly, okay? So at the drop of a hat, because it happens so quickly. And that's exactly what we mean by this expression. When we say we'll do something at the drop of a hat, it means we will do something very quickly and normally without having to be asked for a second time, yeah? Okay, so friends ring, ring him up and invite him to go out for a beer and a pizza and, oh yeah, I'll be there in 10 minutes. When, when, when will you be there? So he just, at a drop of a hat, suddenly makes a decision and off he goes, yeah? Okay, or if somebody invited him on a holiday, we'll go for a few days this weekend, we'll go to the, the beach and we'll lie in the sun and whatever, we'll just relax he'd be gone at the drop of a hat. Why? Because the weather here has been so bad or so poor. And if his friends invite him to come and spend some time on the beach, well, who wouldn't refuse that? So at the, the drop of a hat, gone really, really quickly. So when we use that expression at the drop of the hat or of a hat, it means you're, you don't have to think about it twice. Yeah. You just say, yeah, good. I'm gone. Yeah. And off you go at the drop of a hat. Okay. No, at the drop of a hat, Use it to say when you will do something or you will do something very, very quickly. Okay, so our next expression is before your time. And how many times I've heard that in my, my lifetime, before your time. And actually, how many times have I used it myself? And as we get older, we tend to use it a little bit more. And why? Well, we use before your time when we try to impress about somebody or impress on somebody that something happened well before they were born, or this was before your time, you won't remember it, this happened way back. In fact, actually I was having a conversation with my son uh, over lunch today and he was talking about uh, parts of Scotland and did I ever go on a road trip to Scotland? And I remember one beautiful road trip I made, no, oh, I can't remember how long ago now, it was many, many, many years ago and I told him, oh yes, it was really beautiful, which it was, and a, car ferry I got from part of Scotland to this little island. But I said to him, yeah, well, this is before your time. You know, you weren't even born at that stage. So when we use before your time, it usually means that you weren't around or you, or you weren't born, but you certainly weren't around at that time. So you mightn't have been part of the family. You mightn't have been in that group of friends. You mightn't have been in that job at the time. So before your time means some event, or something happened or took place before you were part of this, this group, okay? Before your time. Okay, the next expression doesn't really include the word time, but it's referring to that, okay? For good, okay? So when we just say something is happening for good, it usually means that's it. It's permanent decision made and it's not going to change in the future. Okay, he's moving away. Where is he going? Oh, he's moving to Canada next week. Well, is he going to be back in a few months? No, 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 he's moving for good, meaning it's a permanent decision. He's selling his house. He's quit his job. He's got his working visa sorted out. He's packed everything in the boxes. In fact, he's even shipped everything across and it will arrive in Canada in a, a few weeks. So he's leaving for good. Wow, that's a big, big decision. Okay, so when we say for good, it usually means something permanent, something that can, not irreversible because nothing is irreversible, but it's likely to be a permanent move. Okay, so he's quit his job for good. Ah, but he always says that. No, 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 this time he means it. Uh, he's handed in his resignation. He's told them he's leaving. So it's for good. It's, it's, he's not, there's no going back. Okay, for good. 
Okay, and the next expression for the time being, and make sure it's B-E-I-N-G that you use for the time being. And unlike the previous expression, we said for good means permanent. For the time being means for now. So it could change and it possibly will change. But now we're doing something else. Okay, so for the time being. So I'm getting my house uh, renovated perhaps or I'm getting my apartment redecorated so I have to move somewhere else so that it'll allow the workers to come in and be able to move around freely so for the time being I'm going to move in with my sister she's got a spare room and I'm going to live there for a few weeks a few months however long it takes so we can in that instance we can say yeah this is what I'm doing for the time being so for the time being, I will be with my sister. And if you need to contact me, here are my contact details, my email and everything else will remain the same. But if you want to post anything or deliver anything, this is where I will be. So for the time being, I'm going to live there. So it means momentarily and momentarily could mean a week, a month, a year even. OK, but for the time being, until I give you further notice. So it's not permanent. It's not irreversible. Yeah but it is something for the time being until I tell you different. Okay, for the time being. From time to time. Well, this is again a, a really well used expression from time to time. It means that we do something occasionally. We don't do it all of the time. We don't do it every day or every week, but from time to time. So, oh, I take a, a, a long weekend from time to time, meaning, you know, every three or four months perhaps, or maybe it's only twice a year, but from time to time, I take a long weekend because those extra couple of days added on to Saturday and Sunday can make a big difference. So I often say, right, I'll go off on a Friday and I'll come back late Monday. So I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and I can go off to the beach or I can go into the forest or whatever I want to do. And it makes you feel better, gives you that little boost of energy and it breaks up the year. So from time to time, that's what I like to do. Or from time to time, I like to go to the library and see what books they have there. I know people don't use libraries so much this uh, these days, but yeah, I like to visit there and see what they have and lots of things have, have changed. So from time to time, I visit the library. From time to time, I take a long break. From time to time, I change my habits and I buy my groceries in a different supermarket. So I'm not always doing the same thing uh, week in, week out. So from time to time, different things, not frequently, occasionally, from time to time. The next expression involves uh, animal, the donkey, the old favorite donkey that stands in the field and doesn't do much, yeah, but um, uh, people like donkeys. So we use this expression, we can use two prepositions, either in or for. So we can say in donkey's years or for donkey's years. And donkeys live a very, very long time. They're usually very, very old and they don't do much, but they live a long time. So when we use the expression in donkey's years or four donkey's years, it's usually referring to a long, long time. So a friend from school who tracks you down and sends you an email and you said, my God, I haven't heard from him or her for donkey's years. It could have been 10 years or 20 years, or in my case, since I left school, almost 45 years. Okay, so I haven't heard from him for donkey's years. I wonder how he's doing. Wow, it's amazing he's able to track me down, yeah? Or I haven't been in the city center for donkey's years. Now, it might not be quite as long as not meeting your old school friends, but you know, it could be five years or 10 years since you went to the city center if you live outside the country and things have changed a lot. Wow, look at these big high-rise buildings. Oh, remember what used to be on the street corner there? Oh, look, they've built a new bridge, yeah? So I haven't been here in donkey's years. I haven't been here for donkey's years, meaning a very, very long period of time, okay? So what is it that you haven't done for donkey's years? Perhaps you haven't gone out for a bit of exercise for donkey's years. Perhaps you haven't, haven't rung that friend you promised to ring in donkey's years. You haven't been, I haven't been to McDonald's uh, for donkey's years. And my wife is very happy, yeah? So, uh, in donkey's years or for donkey's years. Okay, the next one, in the nick of time, and get that pronunciation, nick, get the k 
sound at the end, in the nick of time. What does it mean? Well, in the nick of time means just sufficient time to prevent something bad or disastrous happening. Okay, so you come home from a weekend and when you open the door, you can hear this drip, 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 and you're wondering, what's the noise? And when you go into the kitchen, wow, you've got a burst pipe. And just in the nick of time, you're able to cut off the water before there's a catastrophe, before the whole house floods. And if, if you had stayed away for another night, well, disaster would have happened. And when you uh, came home, you would probably be, be swimming in your kitchen or swimming in your living room because there would be so much water. So when you do something in the nick of time, it's just with sufficient time left or remaining to prevent some disaster happening. He got there in the nick of time. Yeah, so somebody struggling on the beach, he's uh, gone out for a swim and he gets a cramp in his leg and somebody spots him in a bit of trouble. So they phone the, the, the lifeguard and somebody comes and they rescue him just in the nick of time. So when we get there in the nick of time, it's with sufficient time or enough time left to prevent that disaster, to prevent that problem, to prevent something bad happening. So... You can learn your English in the nick of time. So you can prepare for your interview in the nick of time. Yeah, You make sure you leave on time, connect with the early bus so you can get to the appointment early or without being late so your client or future employer is not disappointed. You got there in the nick of time. Okay, next, once in a blue moon, once in a blue moon. Well, normally when we look out at night and we look up at the, the stars and if we're lucky enough to see the, 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 the moon without the pollution, then it's usually white or creamy white, okay? Now, when we use the expression once in a blue moon, it means that something is very, very rare. So I don't know if I've ever seen a blue moon or a pink moon or a red moon, but they can happen occasionally because of some atmospheric happenings, but once in a blue mean, moon means very rare or rarely, okay? So what happens in your life once in a blue moon? Well, perhaps you get a salary increase once in a blue moon, so you could make a bit of a joke about it and say, oh, salary rise in this company? <laughs> you must be joking, once in a blue moon. Or does my your boss say, well done, and thanks for the hard work, ha <laughs> ha, yeah once in a blue moon. So we're normally using it as a bit of a reference to a joke that something happens so infrequently that it's a very, very rare event and something in fact that you could laugh at. My football team, for example, they win two or three matches in a row, one, two, three, once in a blue moon. Most of the time is they're losing one or two or three games in a row, but winning happens so rarely, it's once in a blue moon. Okay, the next expression, a little bit longer, on the spur of, of, a, of the moment, okay? Okay, on the spur of the moment, and what does this mean? Well, when we say on the spur, and it's spelled S-P-U-R, spur, on the spur of the moment, it means that you do something normally without thinking through properly. Normally, you do it very quickly, and, and you don't have a time to think it through or, or to change your mind, okay? So, you just decide to go and visit your grandma and you ring on the doorbell and she opens the door. She says, oh God, what a surprise. It's really so good to see you. Yeah, just on the spur of the moment. I thought it's about time I came and see you. It's, it's, it's so long since I did and it's your birthday in a few days. So I thought I would surprise you. So ta -da, here I am, yeah? So on the spur of the moment. Or perhaps you decided to go on a holiday. On the spur of the moment, I decided to book that holiday decided to jump on the plane, go off with a few friends, have a bit of me time, a bit of downtime. So doing it on the spur of the moment, doing it quickly, doing it suddenly, doing it without really considering or consulting with anybody else. Okay, and the final one I have is, again, doesn't refer to time specifically in, in the idiom, but it does relate to time, the other day, okay? And the other day means, well, the day before, or a few days before, or indeed just something recently. Ah, I bumped into that old school friend of ours the other day. You know, the guy, the guy who used to play football for that team. Yeah. So when we refer to the other day, it could be one day ago. It could be two days ago. It doesn't have any specific reference to a day, but it does mean something recently. 
Ah, just the other day, I was talking to Michael about that very same thing. So something comes up in a conversation around the, the dinner table or the breakfast table. And he said, you know what? I w- we were just discussing that just the other day. So not specifically yesterday, not specifically two days ago, but recently, just the other day. Okay, so there are the, the idioms connected with time. So let me give them to you one more time, okay? A stitch in time saves nine. All in good time, at the drop of a hat. Before your time, for good, for the time being. From time to time, in or for donkey's years. In the nick of time, once in a blue moon, on the spur of the moment, and then finally, the other day, or add in just the other day. Okay, idioms connected with time. Hopefully you've enjoyed those and you understand how to use them. As I said, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you can always listen to my podcast in any way that you you wish and invite some friends and give them the contact details. And if you or they want to contact me, well, then you can do so on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. Very happy to hear from you. Very happy indeed to get your suggestions as to something else that you might want me to include where you're having some problems because that's where I get lots of my ideas. Okay, well, thanks for listening and join me again soon.